Hi, I'm Cody, here with Red, and this week's Ajax Tech Tip video, we're going to be talking about brake pads and brake pad maintenance. Your braking performance can be greatly affected by the condition of your brake fluid, as well as the condition of your stopping surface or brake disc. It's also affected by the condition of your brake pads. There's many different types of brake pad material out there, and depending on what type of riding you're doing, is going to reflect what type of brake pads you want to choose. There's basically two different ways they put the brake pads together. Some of them had a pad material that is actually glued to the backing plate, and some are centered, which is like a powder welding technology, where they actually weld the material to the backing plate. So what are some of the things that the average rider might not know to look for, or some quick tips? You might look at the way the, the pad material looks, see if it's been overheated, see if, you're, if you have a backing plate, if it looks scorched, or if you have some extreme condition where your brake pads are actually bent, that might indicate there's a problem. And you might want to refer to the brake bleeding video and change your brake fluid. Most brake pads come equipped with a wear indicator on them. Or look at the pad surface material. If it's actually thinner than the thickness of, say, a penny or a dime, it's time to replace them. Okay, we're going to replace the brake pads on these. We want to spread our brake pads apart. We need to make sure we have plenty of room for our fluid to go when the brake pads are spread apart. So we're going to pull our cap off our reservoir. Put a rag around here so we don't get fluid all over the place in case it is overfilled. I like to use a pair of snap ring pliers to actually put it in between the pads. That way you don't have to actually get on the pad material or get against the disc. That keeps from damaging anything that doesn't need damaged. We remove the pin and get the brake pad slide pin out of the way. Here's the brake pads out of this one. They're pretty much done. They've been fairly hot. You can tell by the discoloration of the pad surface material. And this is your heat shield that's on the pad. The metal is to help to keep from smashing the fiber insulator that's underneath it. You want to make sure you put that back in place on any replacement pads. But before doing so, make sure it's clean of any debris. You can use a wire brush, rag, something to get the debris out of the way. And if it has any bends or any irregularities, you want to try to straighten that out or replace them with new ones. There's lubricant that you can put on the pad backing plate. And you also need to inspect your brake pad pin. The pin can have wear areas from where it's actually riding in the hole that it guides through. And from sitting in one spot and the pad moving back and forth, it can actually create wear and it'll have a little indentation wherever that is and at that time you'd want to replace it. Otherwise the pad won't move and float as it's supposed to. Want to make sure we're clear of any debris. Make sure that our pad slide plate is present on the front side of our caliper carrier. With our new pads, I always like to take and chamfer the edge of the brake pad. You can do that with a file, or you can do it with some coarse sandpaper. You can lay the sandpaper on concrete to get it flat, and just chamfer the leading and the leading edge so that whenever you put your wheel in and out, it makes it a lot easier and it keeps you from chipping the brake pad when you do so. We did a real light chamfer just to give it something so it doesn't have a square edge to butt the disc into when you remove your wheel next time. We're going to put our pads back in place with our backing plate. And we'll actually lock onto the pad. And it's a nice heat insulator to keep the heat from the pad out of your brake fluid. Now we're going to set those down. We want to clean off our brake pad pin. And you can see the rub marks where the pads ride, but it's not an indentation yet, so it'll still be okay. And this one you can actually rotate if there is a problem. And you take your pad pin grease, just a slight bit, you don't want to overdo it because it doesn't do any good. Go back in, 
rotate the pin so the holes in the correct orientation reinstall the clip and slowly bump our pedal bring our pads back in the contact with the disc now you may after a period of time develop some buildup of the brake pad material in the disc in which case you can simply use a file or some sandpaper. If you use sandpaper, you wanna make sure to use a flat block to back it because motorcycle discs are thin, so you don't turn them on a lathe like they do automobiles. So you can actually just hold it on there and just bring the wheel into it and that will help remove it. You wanna be careful to keep all fingers from getting inside any of the moving parts. Now that you've replaced your pads, you're not quite done. You need to go out and bed your pads in or seat them. The proper way to do that is you run your vehicle up to speed, apply the brake, and keep the brake applied. Allow it to build heat and allow the wear from the rotor to start to kind of seat in and bed and mate with the pad. And after it starts to build a little bit of heat, you'll feel the pedal or lever fade ever so slightly and you're done. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more Ajax Tech Tip videos.